Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so today I want to discuss vortex flow and stability in exotic vacuum objects. So I shared the uh, concept I have for uh, the base building block of exotic vacuum objects. And I just wanted to uh, go over um, what's actually going on with these individual things. So if you look there, we have a, a magnetic flux line there. Uh, if we have these ones uh, on the second level, we, we have a magnetic flux line there. And if we look at the tertiary level, we have a magnetic flux line there. So it's got a lot of supersymmetry going on, uh, rotational symmetry, uh, and uh, it's a really stable object. So how is this moving? Well, if you can imagine it's processing around here, the individual ones here are processing like that, uh, rotating rather, like that. These ones are rotating like that, uh, let's say, and the overall thing is rotating like that, let's say. And so what you get then is if you can imagine that this is rotating this way, and this is rotating this way, and this is rotating this way, if there was material entrained on the outside of this donut over here, this like little, one of these little donuts here, it would be passed off to the next one. Uh, but by the time it's passed off to the next one, this donut will have already been down a bit here, and then it's coming around this way. So effectively what you have is you have material that's passed off and goes around to the outside, and then goes around to the inside. And these are the kind of inside-outside kind of helical things uh, that people would have thought about. And this effectively creates the spiral. So uh, on the super, super schematic here, um, this, this creates a pull in here uh, of a material and um, this uh, uh, with the rotation here and the rotation around effectively um, you have this tractoring through whatever it is the medium. Now um, in this presentation I want to use uh, a range of uh, um, uh, both um, practical and uh, video uh, demonstrations of uh, hydrodynamic um, uh, uh, videos to describe things like the flow around uh, the front of the um, Evo, if it's traveling in this direction, um, how it can capture things uh, up and through the back, uh, how it gathers other Evos, uh, can they pass through one another, um, uh, how, what happens if they come in from the side, uh, uh, the, the, the direction of their movement, how that can be affected by um, uh, incoming other Evos, and uh, symmetry breaking and how that can relate to uh, breakdown of the EVO and uh, strange radiation and their limits on burrowing. So the first thing to note is, uh, I'm going to go right to the last point effectively, we, we will have seen that on the um, John Hutchison samples, the uh, EVOs aren't able to go all the way in. Now they might do if they're extremely aggressive, um, but in the case of the ones that we saw, they were kind of like a little bit less than halfway in. And the reason is, is effectively you've got the center point and material that's uh, uh, effectively gouged out of a surface if it's traveling in this direction by, because the, the pull is around this way. It gets gouged out and thrown down to the center and this, this kind of restricts it from going through this way. And likewise, um, if, if it comes in and collides with the, the surface this way, it would get, again get stopped at this kind of center point. And this feeds into um, strange radiation tracks and uh, the, the makeup of those. So I'm going to talk a little bit about, make, I've already talked about a little bit about making these, but I'm going to go into a lot of detail on that in other videos. And uh, I'm also uh, going to have a little uh, touch on breaking of them uh, and how that can lead to uh, various strange radiation tracks uh, that people have witnessed. Okay, so First up, um, I want to show you this video uh, that I'd seen before, but someone posted it to me the other day. And it's very good. Essentially, I'll give you the whole link, but it's what someone has done, they've done a, 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 a um, smoke ring, uh, Lord Kelvin type smoke ring, and it's created a soliton, and you can see the intense smoke being uh, uh, lensed effectively or, or, or uh, captured into the center of the soliton. So that would be here and here. And I'm just going to play this and I'll give you the links as usual to all of the videos so you can uh, see these in your own time. So essentially you can see that going there and there's another one coming along here. And this is rather nice. It's a nice slow one. So what they've done is they've, they've got a laser, they've got a diffraction grating or a slit, and, and basically these these lines are actually because, uh, I think, the, the diffraction grating. Um, but what you can see is as it's traveling this direction, material that gets swept around uh, does not 
penetrate through the front of the nose of the uh, um, uh, exotic vacuum object, uh, in this case modelled in air. Now air is less uh, uh, viscous than the, the water that I'm going to talk about uh, in a second. But you can see, effectively, it's sucking material in from behind it. It's then being condensed into the soliton. So, and and uh, this is uh, some uh, a system by which you are compressing material into the torus ring. Uh, okay, so there we have it. So it's very effective. So now I'm going to show you the video that I captured in Sue House Ralkar's lab. Uh, this is a section from it, but I think it, it tells you everything you need to know. Um, and, and I'm going to walk through each thing in turn. Okay, so if I stop, and uh, this might take a little bit of a pause. Okay, so um, we're going to look at this particular one here uh, that's forming over here. And we're going to look at the flow in front of that. Now, firstly, you may see down here, there are two... Uh, structures and they come together and merge into one structure and something gets sucked in from behind and that comes along and here we've got this uh, structure coming down now and as that comes down uh, it this isn't sucking it in there but you see it's just moved this uh, exotic vacuum object it's already within the field even though this is all the way over here it's already within the field and uh, this is how um, the, the, the motion is being changed by this one in this very dynamic environment. So you can see as that comes around, it's, it's then going to come in here. So it's been modified, even though it's outside of this actual clear area where it is. Uh, it's being modified in its direction and it gets sucked in and forms part of the, the larger torus. But there doesn't seem to be much uh, uh, effect on its overall shape. And the bigger torus wins the day here. Now, there's this one that comes in from the side here, and it kind of bumps in and it creates a kink. And this effectively is starting to break the symmetry of this exotic vacuum object. And if I wind forward and back, you can see that the material is sweeping round this way, just as we said, it's, it's sweeping round that pushes it in this direction. Sweeping round that's pushing it in this direction. Uh, and it's sweeping around, and that you can actually see something form over here and get sucked in from behind, and it becomes part of it. But the the in, the impact of that one from the side broke the symmetry so much that the the uh, let's say the exotic vacuum object uh, was unable to maintain its integrity, and it basically fell apart. However, some sections of it still survive. And, and go on to fight another day and carry on through the medium. Okay, now, so, so that is, uh, let's, let's look at that. So what you've got is you've got two merging here. Shoulder said they can merge, uh, merging. And there's another one being sucked in from behind. This big one's forming. And it goes in and gets swept into the back. And the one that's coming in from the side here when it goes in and impacts, it's actually going in the opposite direction. And it destabilizes the soliton and it falls apart. Now, just over here, there's another one. If we follow this one here, and it's uh, coming down, coming down, coming down like that, forms a nice soliton, but it, it, it basically almost looks like it's manifesting this soliton or this uh, energy structure here that gets sucked in and it gets accelerated. This is traveling at its speed and this gets accelerated into it and it becomes part of it. And then it's this one down here that actually starts to like, like almost like one black hole feeding off a sun. It eats that one from in front and tears it apart, again, breaking its symmetry. So I think in this video, you see most of the things uh, that I'd want you to see. So you've got capturing from the back, flowing around the front and surviving. So this one's flowing around the front and surviving. And then this one's coming in from the side and breaking the symmetry and so on. Uh, and what you can see is that they're not really able to pass through each other. If one's coming directly from behind 
it actually merges with it. So you can see it there and you can see it in this one. When these two come together and merge into one, then something appears behind. But it's similar to what's over happening over here. It's almost like manifesting another torus, uh, let's say, that it's actually then merging with. So you've actually got it going on over here and here at the same time. Absolutely fascinating. Like I say, I shared this a couple of years ago. Um, and really, for me, uh, this was a, a big starting point. So I have to thank Suhas Ralkar for letting me into his lab. This was a very, very important thing to see. Now, I'm talking about the symmetry breaking there. W what do I mean by that? Well, as I said earlier, uh, this has extreme symmetry. So it has symmetry across that layer, that layer, and across this layer. So every, every lever, layer is sy symmetrical. But if we were to twist this and twist that, um, then you would, you, would, you would have a lack of symmetry across that axis. And it's likewise if we were to do it on the, the sub-levels. But also, if we were to smash this up, again, it becomes unstable because it likes to be in this uh, torus form. And if that becomes completely unstable, then the linkages between these particular elements might snap. And then you might end up with a, a, um, a spiral. Uh, and it, 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 bear in mind, it's still going in this direction. So let's, let's say this snaps here and this bit breaks up here. Then you, you end up with a spiral that's still going in this direction. It's still got a lot of stability going on, but it is broken this link. Now, it might actually fan out into something long, but it still wants to be these forms. And because it may be, um, we, we've noticed that if, if, if we're looking at stuff in air, it travels quite fast. Uh, if we're talking about water, um, this is actually found at 240 frames a second and played back at 30 frames a second. So it's much more viscous. But if we can imagine this was traveling through, let's say, the ether, it's a superfluid. So basically, it's going to travel very, very, very fast, okay, as it's eating that fluid and, 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 and driving its way through it, propelling itself uh, through it. And so what does that lead to? Well, before we get on to that, I want to talk about the Lion Reactor here. Now, the Lion Reactor, as I said at the time, I think will probably be one of the most um, uh, important experiments that's ever been done. And um, uh, it was basically uh, some reactants in there. You can go and look at the Lion experiments. And they were put into um, a reaction tube like this. And it was put into a... Uh, a um, tube furnace here with a Cantal heater wire. And that creates a magnetic field through, but it also creates uh, individual magnetic fields around the uh, wire loops and uh, hot spots. Now, why I'm showing you this is because on the inside of that quartz, after it had run, on the inside, you see these structures. And now I've talked about these before. Uh, they, they were made public a long time ago. Uh, anyway, so... Essentially, I was saying at the time that I believed that these were exotic vacuum objects that were colliding with the surface. So I'm just going to go through uh, an, a couple of these and, and, and see what you think. Um, so if I uh, go into this one, uh, you can see there's, there's one here, there's another one here, uh, there's two here, two here, and then there's these ones which look a little bit different. Now, what I'm saying is that these are toroi. Uh, tori, and they have come in and they've not been able to go all through all the way through the silicon dioxide and uh, they are uh, eating their way in um, uh, so, so essentially uh, they are affecting the material but they can't affect the bit in the middle uh, because the torus has that hole in the middle so uh, if you can imagine uh, we are here or or let's say here and we're eating our way in, and we're eating our way in, but because the torus is big enough, the, the very bit in the center, there's just not enough field strength to be able to rip that bit out on, on the center. So to a certain extent, when we're looking at it in the, um, uh, the uh, Hutchison sample, um, the, there's a part of it being thrown around and ju chucked into the middle, but there's also the fact that it can't be eaten in the middle. So that actually helps you uh, understand what's, what's going on. Okay, so um, now the thing is, these are different sizes, but they're kind of joined together. And the other, the other thing is, is that 
uh, uh, you know, if you can imagine you've got uh, the field going around here and you've got another field going around here, there seems to be some field interference in, in the middle here where it doesn't affect the material. So that's interesting in its own right. And then also you see this tail across the top. So th those are Evos that have come in at, uh, and hit the surface and trying to burrow in the surface. This here is a much larger torus. Uh, so if I actually, uh, have I got any circles there? I would suggest that these, uh, where we, it's, you can go and look at these in your own time, but this is maybe around about 200 micron uh, thing here. And uh, the overall distance between these is 1.5, nearly 1.6 millimeters. So it's, it's similar to the one that we uh, saw on the um, uh, Hutchison sample. And essentially what you're seeing here is the same thing that you are seeing in uh, this uh, hydrodynamic one, where you have the intensity of the material in the center. And this is where your transmutation is going on because you are packing things into a very small box. Um, that's what's happening. So you've got, this is a, a donut that's landed straight onto the surface. And it, these are probably being held here by the magnetic field of the, the uh, heater coil that's wound around it. So they get stuck there with the mag magnetism and they can't go anywhere. In this case, it's got stuck halfway through, you know, so it's got stuck uh, halfway through and it's these two bits are concentrating the material. And you can see there's, an, there's another one up here, there's another one over here. And these are what you get called two spots. So we saw these two spots on the x-rays uh, from line. If I go there, uh, let's see if we can find those. Uh -huh. The two spot x rays. So, yeah, so th this is the two spot x rays. Uh, so, we have uh, two spots here, uh, whatever, you, you can find them, the two spots here. And so, this, th this the exotic vacuum object, has come out and it's got trapped again uh, in the um, uh, x ray film and it's, it's doing its loop here. Or it's a much bigger one. Uh, and depending on how far these x-rays are, are away from the reactor, it's actually the flux loop that's gone through the x-ray. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go back to uh, here. So it's going to run through this very quickly. Uh, there's a whole bunch of images here. So in this case, uh, just want to talk about these cases. So you've got something here and it's it's pulling it round and then it seems to be grabbed by this one and passed on to this one. And then it gets all the way down here and it kind of falls up and then it, as soon as it hits here, it gets pulled onto that one. Um, so if I go back uh, and we look at this one. Now what's happening here and on uh, this one to a, a slightly lesser extent is you've got this little nodule over the end. What is that actually showing you? Well, essentially what's happening is material's being swept around and it's being caught by this next one and it's being swept on and there's no, no other one to capture it. And so it just hangs there in free space. And to see how that works when you've got three, we actually have some somewhere, someone with three. Uh, oh yeah, there we go. In this case, down here, We've got one here and it's sweeping it on, it's been caught here and sweeping it on, it's got caught here and sweeping it on. Now in each case, these are ones that are trying to burrow into the surface and they're basically, uh, whilst they're, they're kind of like, uh, kind of attracted to each other and this is also so, so something to do with their uh, ability to cluster, which I'll talk about more later. Um, the, the interaction between these areas do not allow, does not allow uh, um, uh, them to damage the material. So this is how you can see it's passing on. I'm going to try and represent this with some magnets here. Now these are ND52 uh, 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 magnets, so it's going to be a little difficult um, because they, they come together extremely quickly. So I don't know how I'm going to do this with one hand. Whoa. I think maybe I can do it like this. Okay, so there's two coming together. So what are we looking at there? We're looking at uh, like uh, these two here. These two. So I've just put two together and, uh, oh God, this is probably my worst video ever. Uh, I should have put some colored marks on here, but you can imagine that th this, this is rotating this way and this is still rotating this way. 
uh, it's, it, they're not counter rotating, they're rotating the same way and that's why it's passing it on to the other uh, one here, passing it on to the other one. It's pass, passing it on to the other one. So if I bring in a third one here, there we go. <laughs> These things can break if they hit together quickly. So essentially, what we, what we are seeing there is three tori, they've uh, self-organized into a little string here, uh, they've, they've hit a flat surface, so they can't organize in any other way. And what's happening is material is being sucked in here and dragged around and then passed on from one to the other around the various uh, I, um, uh, tori. So there, there we got four together. Uh, and uh, so what else have we got here? Oh yeah, we, we got another one here, which I think is very interesting. This one looks a little bit more like it is um, a large structure. And this actually is 5.6 millimeters uh, in size. Now, uh, it was clear that there was ones even bigger than this uh, in the Lion Reactor. Uh, but this one's very interesting over here because in addition to the very large torus, and, and it, it's interesting because this looks like the material is being sucked out of here and then dumped here. You've got like a, a little black zone here and then over here you've got the white spot and we'll see that in other experiments. Uh, so th the end point here, uh, over here, this one here, I just want to zoom into that and it's here. And you'll see essentially what we've got is we've got a, a, a big one and I haven't got a, 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 another a uh, big, uh, sm another small neodymium magnet, but I have got, oh dear, this little one here. So if you can imagine it's something like that, and actually this is another uh, torus and it's going around this way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You've got this one going around this way and this one's also going around this way. Um, uh, you, you have one and it's kind of passing it off itself onto here. And actually these might be uh, going in different directions. But anyway, you get my point. Uh, Small torre can still join to big torre. And uh, what is the radius of this one compared to this one? Maybe that's about the same. So this one might actually snap round and become part of this in, in different circumstances. But in this case, you can see how this is very wonderfully uh, marked into the material.